Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing another seedling update. It is now April 4th. It's been two weeks since I did the last seedling update and everything has grown so much. Our days and nights are getting a lot warmer, so anytime the nighttime lows are above 40 to 45 degrees, I'll leave all of these plants out here and during the day, they're out here to get a little bit of sunlight as well. Today I'm also going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on my seedlings. Some of them need to be pinched, which I will explain later on, and I'm also going to be doing some fertilizing. So this first tray over here is a tray of flowers. Here I had a bunch of dahlias, and I've already taken a lot of them out to pop them up, which you can see in this next tray. So I've put each seedling into its own little two inch pot here. I also have some straw flowers, although I didn't get very good germination on those, so I just have a few of them. And then these little furry leaves are Rebecca's. And then all of these taller ones are Sweet Alyssum. And you can actually see that some of them are even starting to put out little flower buds. These ones are actually going to go out in the garden very soon because they are more cold hardy. So they'll be able to take the cooler temperatures and even if we get a frost, they'll be okay. And then the last two rows here, I have some coleus. I need to thin these out today and you can see that some of the leaves are even starting to get those patterns on them and the colors, which is really cool. In the second tray, in addition to the dahlias that I just showed you, I also have some Nicotiana. This is my first time growing Nicotiana and I cannot believe how beautiful these seedlings look. Just a few weeks ago, these were the tiniest little seedlings you can see here. Here's a little baby seedling and look how small they started. And they were small for a little bit, but the last few weeks after I potted them up, they have just gotten so big. Nicotiana is also known as flowering tobacco. It's supposed to be a really fragrant flower and I'm really excited to see how those do this year. Then in the back of this tray, I also have all of my basils or at least the first round of them because I probably will be succession sowing these. So in the back here, I have sweet Italian and Genovese basil. Then I have my Thai basil, which I think is big enough for me to pinch today. So I'll be doing that later. And then I have a few cells of Tulsi down here, which are a little farther behind. They're a little bit smaller, but coming up really nicely. In this next tray, I have a lot of tomatoes in the back. In the front here, I have my lemongrass, which has gotten a little bit bigger since last time. My agastashi has germinated, so that's just getting started. I have one pot of rhubarb, and I have a couple of plants in there, so at some point, I'll probably come out and either separate or thin down to just one, but I'm not gonna be doing that just yet. Here are more dahlias that I'm going to be pinching today. These ones were repotted earlier, so they are a little bit farther along and they're old enough to be pinched. And my tomatoes have put on so much growth since two weeks ago. And two weeks ago, most of them had pretty much just germinated. So they barely had any of their true leaves and now they are just so tall. And I'm really glad that I waited a little longer this year before I started them because I probably would have had to pot them up two more times before they were ready to be put out. And as it is, I actually think I might need to pot these up soon just because they are getting so tall. I'm not gonna do it today, maybe in another week or so. I'm gonna leave them in here for now. I have noticed that a lot of the roots are growing down and I don't want them to get too tangled up. So. I'll pop them up before they get too crazy in there, but I think they're okay for now. If you can see the height of some of these plants, they're a good like six inches at least now. They're smelling really nice. Then in this next tray, in these little paper pots, I have some nasturtiums that are coming up. And then the rest of the tray is filled with my eggplants and peppers. And these have also, just like the tomatoes, put on so much growth in the last week or two getting really nice big leaves and they're still looking really healthy no discoloration or any issues but I am going to be fertilizing them today just because I think they are at the size where they could start benefiting from that and I want them to be well fed before they go into the ground 
Most of them are pretty big. They have a few sets of big true leaves. I only have a few that are a little bit farther behind. These Ruby King ones, which are bell peppers, I think they might be a little farther behind maybe because the seed is a little bit older. I think these were some of my oldest pepper seeds. And then the other one that's a little smaller is the Arroz con Pollo pepper. Those again are a little bit older, but I think it's mostly just because this pepper just takes quite a while to get going. It takes a while to even start producing any peppers, so I just think it's one of the ones that just takes a little bit to get going. And then this tray here, I have more flowers. These ones in the front, the first few rows are penstemon. It's my first time growing them and I've got some really nice healthy looking plants, so I'm really excited to see how those do. And then in the last few rows, I have gomfrina in here, also looking really good. I have to look up and see if gomfrina needs to be pinched. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if it does, um, but if it did, these would be a good size to be pinched as well. In the very back here, I only just started these the other day. Um, this is just a bunch of different marigolds. I have three varieties and those are just starting to germinate here. So now's a good time to be starting more warm weather flowers, things like marigolds and nasturtiums. So if you haven't started those yet and you're in a similar zone to us, then now might be a good time for that. So I've got just a few more trays that are outside right now. In this first tray, I have mostly asters, which have just started coming up. One row of auric. And then on this side, I have a few rows of snapdragons and those are looking so nice and big. I am gonna pinch these ones today. In the next tray, I have a couple of containers of marigolds. We just sewed these like 20 minutes ago, so those will be coming up in a few days. I have a few pots of celery. These ones are finally looking bigger from last time. They have a couple more true leaves on them. And then all of these pots, I think, are stunted because I started these a long time ago and they should be a lot bigger and they're just not looking very good. Luckily, when I noticed that these were growing really slowly, I did start more broccoli seeds and they're already transplanted in the garden and I am going to be doing a garden tour very soon. So you'll see those in the garden and they're looking much bigger and healthier than these, even though they were started like a month later. So these ones, I'm leaving them here for now, but they might have to be tossed. I'll just have to try for the cauliflower in the fall and hopefully the new broccoli that I sowed will produce something this summer. Then in these last two, I have thyme, which is looking really good, and also these artichokes, much bigger than last time. Those leaves are getting really nice and big, really exciting to see. Then in my last tray, I have a bunch more snapdragons. These are all rocket snapdragons. They're looking so beautiful and healthy. My snapdragons, I'm gonna pinch them today and they're actually gonna be put out in the garden very soon because these are a cold hardy flower. Then I have some parsley and some soapwort. I don't know much about soapwort. I just saw it at the store and it said it was a really good drought tolerant ground cover. So I just thought I would try that out. I just have a few of those that have germinated there. I have some green onions here, which I can probably put those out in the garden soon too. And then a couple more flowers. I have Sweet Annie, which is a really nice everlasting flower. So it dries really well and it's also very fragrant as well. And then this last row, I have Status. Although this one I think is a Nicotiana, I probably just popped it in when I was separating my seedlings out because I had an empty cell here. But these ones with the more like frilly leaves are status. And those ones I'll let grow a little bit longer and they can probably be put out soon too. Okay, so that is the look at all of the seedlings I have going right now. And now it's time for me to do a little bit of pinching and fertilizing. So I'll show you all those things right now. I'm going to be demonstrating the pinching back process on these dahlias and also my snapdragons. And if you haven't heard of pinching back before, you're basically just pinching off the top of your plant. And the reason you do this is so that you create a bushier, stronger plant with more branches, which is especially good if you're growing cut flowers because you want more stems that are going to produce more flowers. So if you look at this dahlia right here, if you go up the stem, you can see that at this area, 
there are these little shoots that come from like the little armpits of the plants and if we were to cut this back right here two stems would emerge from this plant where there is actually just one here so a lot of times you'll pinch back above the second or third set of leaves so this is the first set of true leaves and this is the second one here so I'm gonna pinch back right above this little top area here and even though here you can't really see those two side shoots like you can see in the lower one they are going to produce two shoots right here and you're going to end up with a plant that has a sturdier base and you're going to get more stems out of it as well so let me turn this around and do this again for this other plant you can use a scissor if it's easier for you or you can just take your fingers and pinch off the tops just like that so same thing here this plant is a little bit younger um, so that third set of leaves is not as developed yet um, but sometimes I do pinch right above the first set of leaves so I'm just gonna try it out with this one and we'll see how that does And then here's another one. I'm just gonna pinch off that top. So you can do this process when these plants are a little bit bigger. That way you can see more easily where those side branches come from. But I've done this process before, so I am comfortable just going in even when these plants are a little bit younger. So those are those dahlias. Let me show you the same thing with these snapdragons. And it's really just the same process, you just find first set of leaves, second set of leaves, and then pinch right above it. I'm gonna use a scissor for this. So this is kind of hard to do with one hand, um, but where I pinch that back, we're gonna have two more branches come from there eventually. Here's a closer look at the snapdragon stem where you can see the two little shoots coming from the armpits down the stem over there. You can just barely see them starting to grow on this second set of leaves there. So pinching is not something that you do with every plant. There are some plants that will not grow back if you pinch them, such as single stem sunflowers. Those are one that you probably don't want to pinch. So before you go and do any, any of this on your plants, you might want to just do a quick Google search and just say, like for example gumfrina i need to look that one up because i can't remember so i'll just google do gumfrina plants need to be pinched back and you should be able to just find that information online this isn't like a necessary step but like i said it can help you get better production for certain plants um, especially ones that do branch out whether it's for flowers or food, it can help you to get more stems of what you're trying to grow. In addition to the snapdragons and the dahlias that I'm showing you here that I'm pinching, some other things that you might want to pinch for better production are various basils, which is true both for if you're eating it as an herb or if you're growing it for cut flowers. Also cosmos, zinnias, amaranth, and branching sunflowers. A couple of examples of things you don't want to pinch are single stem sunflowers and single stem celosia. Since these are the first seedlings that I'm pinching for the season, I don't have like a side-by-side -side comparison of what a pinched seedling and an unpinched seedling looks like, but I do have an entire video that I've done in the past dedicated to pinching where I do show you that side-by-side, -side. so if you want to see how those turn out, I will link that video down below and I show this process on a lot of different basils in that video as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish off pinching the snapdragons and then we're gonna move on to fertilizing the seedlings. So I'm gonna be fertilizing some of my seedlings and this is the fertilizer that I'm going to be using. It's a liquid fish fertilizer and this is going to be diluted very heavily for seedlings because they are delicate. You don't wanna over fertilize them. 
And I'm doing this today because I am going to be leaving the plants out in the greenhouse overnight since it is going to be pretty warm tonight. The fish fertilizer can be smelly, so just keep that in mind if you are fertilizing indoors or maybe just plan it for a day when you're gonna be keeping everything outside like I am today. So here is the recommended amounts for fertilizing. And I am basically just going to be doing, I'm going to be doing half of what's recommended for vegetables since these are still seedlings. I don't think they need to be so strong. So I'm gonna do one tablespoon about per gallon of water. So I'm just gonna pour some into this cup for now just so that I can make sure I'm not getting too much. Uh, my watering can can hold two gallons. So I'm gonna try and get two tablespoons right now. So that's probably good. It smells really bad. Um, you don't have to use fish fertilizer for seedlings. You can use whatever liquid fertilizer you want or something that's easy to be diluted. There's also seaweed fertilizer or, or emulsion, I think it's called, which might be less smelly than the fish one and should also be good. So you can look for that, but I have never used that. I've only used this one, so I can't say for sure. Um, anyway, I'm going to go fill this up with water just to get it nicely mixed up and then I'm going to fill up my watering can which can hold two gallons. So I've got my fish fertilizer in my watering can right now. It's been diluted and all I'm going to do is pour the diluted fertilizer into the bottoms of my trays and basically bottom water my plants as usual but that water is going to have more nutrients in it to feed these plants. Um, just a little note about fertilizing. You pretty much only want to do it after your seeds have come up and they're already growing like their second set of leaves. Like you can see these eggplants here, they already have their first set of leaves and the second ones are growing. If you have seeds that have just sprouted, they really don't need the extra nutrients because they have everything that they need to grow inside the seed already and it's just really not necessary for a plant that's that small. So I'm really just going to be fertilizing any of my plants that are already pretty large, like these tomatoes and peppers, where you can see they've already grown multiple sets of leaves. You can tell that they're pretty much at a point where they're big enough that they've probably used up a lot of the nutrients in their little cells. So I'll start with this tray here that has my tomatoes and also some dahlias and I'm just gonna fill this up until the tray is a quarter full so that all of these pots can wick up the moisture from the bottom here. You can also use this fertilizer as a foliar feed, which means you can fill it up in like a some kind of sprayer and spray it over the leaves of your plants and the plants will take in the nutrients through their leaves. But since fish fertilizer is so smelly, I don't really want to be spraying that everywhere. So I'm just doing it like this and it will also work. I think the foliar feeding is possibly more effective. I don't 100% know, but I really don't want to get fish spray everywhere. So I'm not going to be doing that today. So that's pretty much it. I think I've gotten all of the plants that are big enough to get fertilizer. I have some extra in my watering can, so I'm just gonna pour it into the top of my green stalk and it can fertilize any of the plants that are down there. So I'm just gonna pour it on the top here. And that's gonna drip down to any of the plants that are in the green stalk right now. Here's a quick look. I have strawberries up here and I have some kale, although it is looking pretty sad right now. And also some lettuce. 
in these bottom ones, I've just sewed some radishes in there. Um, but like I said, I am going to be doing a garden tour very soon. So I'll show you more things that are going on in the garden soon. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this seedling update and I'll see you again in the next video.